Hello and welcome to St. Paul's Church Online. We're so glad that you're joining us for this online worship service today. As part of our time together, we're going to be sharing communion. So you might go ahead and gather some elements that you can share with yourself and those around you today during worship. You'll need a, a bread, like a, a cracker or a cookie or a slice of bread. And you're gonna need a cup, like water or juice or milk, whatever you have with you at home. That is what we can use for communion today. We hope that you'll gather those elements and now join us for a time of worship. of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my eyes Would you join us now for our call to worship? Please read along with me aloud, wherever you may be. All of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes, and through Christ our amen ascends to God for His glory. He has anointed us, set His seal of ownership on us, and put His Spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Amen. Take my hand, pray. 
precious Lord, lead me home. And would you join me now for our affirmation of faith? Please read along with me wherever you are. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything suitable for its time. God has put a sense of past and future into our minds. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before Him. Whatever God does endures forever. Well, welcome once again to St. Paul's Church. My name is Matt Skillen. I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad that you are here. Would you think about joining us online at stpauls.faith? You can click, click the Connect With Us button, and that's a place where you can connect with us on our website. It's also where you can find our online prayer request link. We'd love to know how to pray for you. We pray for every request that comes in, and we hope that you'll share with us what God is doing in your life and what He's placed on your heart. Our mission focus for the month of January is the St. Paul's Benevolence Fund. The word benevolence is actually defined as something that's well-meaning, kind-hearted, or an act of goodness or goodwill or charity. And that is exactly what this fund is used for. With life's ups and downs, we all hope to be prepared for what comes next, but that's not always the case. That's where the Benevolence Fund comes into play. A donation to this fund in the past has offered a one-time medical bill coverage for an attendee that was struggling or several months of counseling for a congregation member in their desperate time of need. A much-needed health care premium balance, maybe while a family was in between jobs. The Benevolence Fund has recently covered a congregation member's Christmas wishes for the young children. And through your donations, we've been blessed to be able to cover a roof repair for a neighbor or purchase a bus pass for a struggling student who needed transportation and Multiple times we've purchased grocery cards for families within our congregation or our neighbors that were struggling to put food on the table throughout the year. In essence, this fund allows us to assist someone when they need it most. Please consider offering an extra donation of money to the St. Paul's Benevolence Fund by using the envelope that was sent to you in this month's packet or using our online giving platform at stpauls.faith. As always, we take an opportunity just to thank you for your gracious and radical generosity. It's through those of you who have partnered with us through your tithes and offerings that we've been able to remain a light for Christ in Elizabethtown and beyond. Thank you for all that you do, for all that you give, for all that you share. And we'd like to take a moment now to say thank you to God for all that he's doing. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you do, for all that you give because Everything comes from you. We ask now that you bless these gifts that we're able to return to you. Multiply them several times over so that your work here on earth will continue. These things we pray in your heavenly gracious name. Amen. Well, if you would like to know more about how to partner with us in this way through tithes and offerings, we invite you to stpauls.faith where you can learn about e-giving and where you might be able to bring your tithe if you want to bring something physical to the church office. However you choose to give, we thank you for all that you do. Would you join me now for the recitation of our Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen.
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. In the beginning, in the beginning, God had a plan. Like a masterful artist, he set that plan in motion on the grand canvas of the universe. Whether you've read the Bible cover to cover or not, most of us have heard the creation stories, like how God created everything in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. But it actually all started with what best could be described as chaos. Genesis 1-2 says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. <laughs> That's typically a sign that you see as you cross the river going from Pennsylvania into New Jersey, right? Chaos. The dictionary actually has three different definitions for the word chaos. Uh, the first definition is complete disorder and confusion. Uh, the second definition is be behavior so unpredictable as to appear random. And then, of course, the third definition is chaos is the formless matter supposed to have existed before the creation of the universe. I don't know about you, but for many of us, I would think that we would want to add a fourth definition. Chaos is the year 2020, right? Yeah, 2020 was a season of chaos. And now 2021 has begun, and, and in many ways, it seems like we're, we're still in that chaos. Yet Genesis 1 verses 1 to 5, teaches us a very important truth. God is not afraid of chaos, and neither should we be. Why? From God's perspective, chaos is often the birthplace of creativity. God birthed an entire universe out of chaos. Imagine what he can do with ours. So as we begin 2021, 
I want to invite you to do something with me. We need to somehow suspend our old way of thinking that chaos is bad and order is good. The reality is God is not limited by our limitations, and God is not afraid of the dark. Remember, God separated the light from the darkness, and he did it again in Jesus, and he's calling us to do it again today. After all, we are the light of the world. That's what Jesus said. So as we begin 2021, I want to issue a new focus for our year together. It's based on a word, a phrase, and a Bible passage. The word is anchor. The phrase is anchor in the storm. And the Bible passage is Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 20. Today, I want to look with you at that word, phrase, and passage, and then set in motion a plan, a plan that will take us this year into God's word, into God's unchanging purposes for us, in order to discover how we may live secure and strong within a season of chaos. And I have a new prayer that I want to invite you to pray with me this year. Uh, Some of you actually got a sampling of that prayer a few months ago when we worshiped outside together. Today, I want to invite you to pray this every week, maybe even every day. This is the prayer. Lord, what do you need me to see? What do you need me to hear? What do you need me to know? And what do you need me to do? I am your servant in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me draw you into the word anchor, the phrase anchor in the storm, and now the passage, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 20. I invite you to follow along in your Bible or on the Bible app, or look at the words as we put them up onto your screen. This is what Hebrews 6 says, starting in verse 13. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. When it's to be used, An anchor typically has a rope or a chain that has two ends. One end is attached to the anchor itself. The other is secured to the boat. In order for the anchor to work properly, both ends must be secured appropriately. Makes sense, right? The one end must be connected to the anchor itself. Otherwise, you toss the anchor out of the boat, and it just sinks. The other end must be connected to the boat, 
Again, otherwise the, the anchor will simply sink and it won't help the boat at all. When both ends of the rope or chain are securely connected to their appropriate places, the anchor actually helps the boat withstand the winds and the waves of storms that come our way. So such an important metaphor and image for us. Listen, anchors are most important for when the winds, the waves, and the weather are challenging. Did you hear that? Anchors help us in the midst of stormy weather. Now, Hebrews chapter 6 has a larger context. The writer of the letter is actually warning the readers about the dangers of drifting away from God. Hebrews was written in the latter part of the first century, when Christians were actually facing the, the beginning of major persecution. According to biblical scholars, most likely Hebrews was written to Jewish Christians who, because of that persecution, were actually stepping away from following Jesus and instead were, were returning back to Judaism. Hebrews is a carefully written letter. It spends quite a bit of time showing those early Christians how going back to the old ways of doing life are no longer helpful. Uh, the writer actually emphasizes that by virtue of his crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus actually fulfilled the entire Jewish law. Therefore, Returning to Judaism of the day was not going to bring them salvation and eternal life. According to the writer of Hebrews, only Jesus could do that. Jesus is the only way by which we may be saved. This is such an important point. Hebrews is basically telling those early Christians that Jesus is the source of hope and the only truth that will give them eternal life. So what do we know about this hope from this particular passage? We know a few things. First of all, we know that this hope, according to verse 18, is set before us. In other words, it's a hope that God himself gives to us. Second, according to verse 17, we know that this hope is rooted in the unchangeable character of God's purpose. This hope expresses trust in a plan that God had from the very beginning of time. This hope is also confirmed by two unchangeable things, God's promise and God's oath. That's what it says in verse 18. Our hope in Christ is rooted in God's promises from the very beginning established with Abraham as God himself gave an oath. According to verse 19, uh, this hope is also a sure and steadfast hope, reminding us that there is nothing, nothing, that can alter, defeat, or challenge, or nullify God's promise. God's promise goes all the way back to the beginning. This hope is also empowered by the resurrected Jesus. We also know that our hope is guaranteed, guaranteed by the resurrection of Jesus. You see, the resurrection actually shows God is serious about his promises. This hope is also a very important reference to Jesus himself giving us the power to hold fast. Hold fast, it says in verse 18, to the hope that is set before us. Hebrews reminds us that Jesus genuinely wants us to hope in him. He wants us to trust him. And by the Holy Spirit that he has given to us, he gives us the power to stay faithful to that promise. In other words, Hebrews teaches us that Jesus himself is the anchor and we're to hold fast to him 
especially in the storms of life, especially in the chaos. See, we don't put our hope into a future. We put our hope in a person, Jesus. Look, God has a plan. He's had a plan since the beginning. In the beginning, God separated the light from the darkness. When we face dark times, when we face chaos, we need to hold on to the steadfast, secure anchor that is Jesus himself. So let's anchor ourselves in the one who looked upon chaos, darkness, a a world without form and order, and with a word, he brought light and life. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. We just sang that during the Christmas season, right? Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. So let's anchor ourselves in the one who created all things, including us with purpose and intentionality. How do we do that? Well, let me summarize what the Bible passage teaches us in Hebrews. Uh, Number one, we learned from Hebrews that God's promises never change. Why would they need to? God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He sees through all time. So God can be trusted to always be true to his word. Number two, God's promises never fail. They can be trusted. They are reliable. They are steadfast. They are a source of hope because they're rooted in Jesus Christ himself. Number three, God's promises are about life. It says in verse 17 that we're to hold fast to the hope set before us. In verse 20, it says that Jesus is the forerunner on our behalf. Now that word forerunner is, is actually a Greek word, prodromas, and it was a military word. The forerunner, actually in military terms, went on ahead knowing that others would soon be following. Friends, I have a question for us. What chaos do you need anchored right now? It's the first Sunday of 2021. We cannot know, nor can we predict what this year will be like. We may, in fact, be facing into yet another year of chaos. Well, Uh, That's the cue for all of us to let out a huge sigh. But there is a purpose in the world. Genesis 1 teaches us that. In fact, God brought order into the world, creative order. And it was birthed in the void of chaos. So let's remember that God is not afraid of chaos. Neither should we be. Let's see what God has in mind, what what he wants to create out of our chaos. So will you join me now? Let's pray our prayer together. Lord, what do you need me to see? What do you need me to hear? What do you need me to know? And what do you need me to do? I am your servant. In Jesus' name, amen. We're now entering into a time of communion. And at this time, we invite you to gather those elements that you've set aside, both the bread and the cup. Communion is a time for us to think about the great sacrifice that God has made for us in sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for our sins. This great sacrifice still relevant to us today. On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks, and then he broke it, saying to his disciples, this is my body, 
broken for you. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for your sins and for the sins of all. Would you now join me for a moment of prayer? Heavenly Father, as we stretch our hands out over these elements that we have gathered, Lord, bless them. We recognize that though we are not worthy of this meal, you invite us to partake, to understand, and to reflect on the great sacrifice that you made. Heavenly Father, I pray now that your Holy Spirit come down upon these elements for us. May they become the very body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for our sins. These things we pray in your heavenly gracious name. Amen. Well, wherever you are right now in this moment, I invite you to share these elements with those that you have around you. If you're on your own, don't worry. You're never alone because we'll be right here with you, participating in communion with you. As you take the bread and break it, say these words to yourself, the body of Christ. And as you take the cup, say these words, the blood of Christ. Would you join me now for a closing word of prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for the great sacrifice of Jesus Christ, for him dying on the cross so many years ago so that we today would be free from our sins. We thank you, Lord, for this moment, this opportunity to reflect on your great love. Lord, may this love and spirit that you send fill us to the point of overflowing so we may share it with all who we encounter. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining us for worship today and for joining us on a year that looks chaos in the face with faith and trust in the God who is our anchor. In fact, we don't know, as I said in the message, we don't know what this year will bring. But we know the God who created us, and we know that he is true to his word. So let's anchor ourselves with faith and hope and new life, and look forward together to what he has in store. God bless you, and let's journey together in this year. In Jesus' name, amen.